We have three files here, A, B, and C. In file A, we require file B. Then in file B, we require file C. Now, if we run file A, what kind of result do you think we will get? Let's find out. We can see we got three outputs. The first one comes from file A itself. The second one comes from file B because requiring file B will cause file B to be executed. When file B is being executed, it will require file C, which means file C will be executed. So in the end, we got three outputs, A, B, and C. What if, in file A, we also require file C? What kind of result will we get? In other words, how many times will file C be executed? Once or twice? Let's find out. We can see we only have one output from file C, so this proves that file C has only been executed once. The conclusion is, if you require a file, the required file will be executed. But if you repeatedly require the same file, that file will still only be executed once. Next, let's take a look at another scenario, circular dependency. Circular dependency means two files interlinking each other. For example, in file A, we require file B. Then in file B, we require file A. In computer programming, circular is usually a very bad word because it often means infinite loop. But in CommonJS, circular dependency won't cause us any problems. The linked file will not execute the linking file, which means file B won't execute file A. We can see we only have two outputs. The first one comes from the execution of file A, and the second one from the execution of file B. Requiring file A from file B will not cause file A to be executed again. Next, we module exports a value in file A. Will the require function in file B return that value? Let's find out. In file B, we console log the require function. Then in file A, we module exports a value. The question is, where should we put the module export statement? Before the require function or after it? Let's try before first. Now let's test the program. We can see the require function in file B has returned the exported value from file A. Next, we move module.exports to the back of the require function. Then let's try the program again. We can see this time we only got an empty object, which is the default value of the exports property. When we node file A, its first line of code will be executed. Then file B will be required. From there, Node.js will move to file B and execute it. If we put the module.export statement before requiring file B, the exports property of module A will receive the new value. As a result, the require function in file B will return that value. But if we put the module.export statement behind the require function, by the time file B is being executed, the exports property of module A has not received any value yet. Naturally, the require function in file B will return us the default value of the exports property, which is an empty object.